Hello there, I'm Daryl Stringer, photography coach and marketing expert at builderphotographybusiness.com. Now I get a question recently from a photographer saying, how do I take photos outside of a house when it's raining? So today we're going to look at how we can go from this to this. So let's, uh, let's take a look. This is what we often get when it's raining. Uh, this was taken at 1 40th of a second and you get these streaks showing up over the over the photo you can see it's coming down through here just lots of streaks uh, lots of lines all over it uh, we want that all gone uh, it was interesting doing this test looking at the impact of different shutter speeds onto how much rain was showing so uh, this one i took it up to 1 100th of a second uh, the streaks aren't as long, but they're still obviously there. Uh, if we just look over this other side where it was a bit darker, again, still some streaks there showing up. This one was taken at 1 640th of a second. And we've just about frozen these drops of rain. Much uh, less streaky, uh, still really dotty. Of course, it was still coming down with rain there. And you can see over here a little bit of a line. Uh, you can see but it much much shorter uh, and then this final exposure was taken at 1 12 50th of a second if we go in tight we can see these dots of rain now are pretty dotty there aren't isn't too much of a streaky pattern going on there at all uh, if we just scroll across we can see here those streaks have mostly gone and they're just pretty short dots scattered amongst the darker shadows there. We still don't want these though. Now you could probably go along and clone those out, but that's just going to be a, uh, a nasty experience. It would take a long, long time. We want to automate that where we can, and we can do that. In fact, we're going to get it looking like this, where we go in close, and as you can see, the dots have disappeared completely. Right over this side, you can see they're just not there anymore. So that's where we want to get to. How do we do it? All right, let's have a look at that. So what I did to, uh, to remove all of that rain is that I took 10 exposures uh, at 1 12 50th of a second. You can see all of these here, just all of the one spot. 10 different exposures, and then we're going to stack them up and let Photoshop do all of the work. So here's how we do that. We go into Photoshop file go down to scripts and then statistics click on that then we want to choose the stack mode of median what that's going to do is it's going to choose the median result the one constant in all of those images and keep that in the photo and get rid of everything else so the one constant is the house the variable is all those little drops of rain in front of the house so when we stack it up, when we have enough exposures and when the drops are small enough, and that's why we have to use a fast shutter speed of at least one one thousandth of a second, Photoshop then can remove all of those drops of rain because that's the variable. That's the thing that changes with each one. When we have enough exposures, it has enough there to choose from. And that's why I did 10 exposures in this set. You could try less uh, and see how that goes. It probably depends on how how heavy how dense that rain is falling down anyway let's go ahead and do it you'll see what i mean so we select medium and then we select and we'll browse the files and we'll bring them in here so there's our files all showing up uh, we can choose to also attempt to automatically align source images i'm going to untick that for this occasion uh, because we're keeping things pretty solid there shouldn't be much movement. I had it on a trial, but everything was locked in, so it should stay pretty still. So then we just hit OK. OK, Photoshop has finished, and uh, the rain has gone. Let's go in and have a look. Uh, here we can see all those dots that were appearing all here either, so it's done a really, really good job. And we could probably just about leave it there if we wanted to. Uh, you'd want to put a new sky in and things. Uh, but we're going to uh, just give it a little bit more punch to try to make it a little bit closer to uh, to a sunny day. Uh, one thing we can do there is uh, 
add, uh, adjust the color balance a little bit. Uh, so we're going to put just a little bit more highlights, uh, warmer highlights into, uh, sorry, warmer tones into the highlights. So we're just going to just up the highlights a little bit with a bit of red and a bit of yellow. Uh, so that's a start. Um, I'm just going to flatten the image now so it's not all still stacked up there. Uh, one thing though that we want to do though is boost some highlights and, and increase a little bit of contrast to it. That's what we'd expect when the sun was shining. One thing we can do there is duplicate the layer. Uh, just hit Control J um, on a PC. Then we're going to change the layer blend mode to overlay. Now that's uh, way too strong. So then what we just want to do is lower the opacity down. There, that's that's looking okay. So you can see the difference that's made. If we take that away, it's just added a lot more punch. In fact, I'm just going to drop it a little bit further. Just so it's subtle there, and not too strong. There we go. Okay, uh, there's more that we can do with this though. Um, in Photoshop, we can also use a dehaze filter to remove some of the haze from all of the rain. If we look in here, uh, it was raining over the, the hill behind the house. Uh, we want to try to remove some of that where we can. So to do that, flatten our layer down. I'm going to just select this layer that we've got, copy it and just keep it ready to put on top again once we've done with this. So what we do is we right click on the layer and we convert it to a smart object. Then what we're going to go is go to Filter and then into Camera Raw Filter. Okay, and then we come over to the Adjustments panel, we click on Effects, and we've got Dehaze. We're just going to take that all the way up and then we can tweak it later. But you can see what it's done, it's added a lot more clarity to the hill in behind. So let's just click OK. Okay, now then just a moment ago, I also uh, copied the original photo to put on top. So I'm just going to put that up on top again. Then what we're going to do is uh, add a layer mask and then click it on the layer mask with a black paint, with a, a white paintbrush. I'm just going to sweep it across. Just to uh, bring it back a little bit just over the over the foreground and the areas where I don't want that haze or dehazing filter to take effect. We only want to apply it to the hills behind and amongst the trees and things up the top here. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm just going to drop the opacity just a little bit. Bring it down. Okay, let's just check. So that's where it was. Just going to just add a little bit more there. Okay, there, that's uh, that's coming on really well. Let's flatten the image again. And uh, now we want to bring out some of these highlights and some of these mid-tones. So what we're going to do is go across, we're going to use the dodge tool. We'll start by working on the highlights. We're just going to, with a large brush, just sweep it across some of these highlighted sections just to make them a little bit brighter. That's good. So all I'm doing is just sweeping across with the dodge tool, just adjusting some highlights, uh, just to make them a little bit, uh, a little bit more pop. A little bit brighter, Let's just sweep over some of this tree where we'd have the sun uh, coming down on a good day. And let's just sweep in some of the mid-tones as well. So I'm just going to sweep that across and again over the tree too. Okay, 
And uh, that's about it. The only final thing to do then is to add in a new sky. Uh, I talk about that in another video that I've done. You can uh, find that on here somewhere. Uh, and, uh, and then we're done. So you can see that's just made such a difference. Uh, if we go back and have a look at the original photo where we were, uh, you can see it was uh, not very usable. All those um, dots of rain. And then we go through to uh, what it looks like now. Uh, much uh, much brighter, we've got the warmer tones, and blue sky and all of those dots of rain have uh, gone completely. Uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, give it a try next time you come across some rainy weather and you've still got to be shooting. Uh, take multiple exposures, make it above one thousandth of a second with your shutter speed. Uh, stack them all up, add in a blue sky, and hopefully it is much better than you could do before. All right, this has been Daryl Stringer. I'll see you again on the next video. Bye for now.